Welcome to Algebra 2, Lesson 3-3, Polynomial Identities. In this lesson, we will prove and use polynomial identities. We have three new vocabularies here, Binomial Theorem, Identity, Pascal's Triangle. So we'll look at these three big concepts. Let's start with Explore and Reason. Look at the following triangle. Okay, so we're looking at the whole triangle here. Each number is the sum of the two numbers diagonally above. So 1 is from 0 plus 1, and this one is also 0 plus 1, okay? And then 2 is 1 plus 1, and 1 here is still one, 0 plus 1, and so on, okay? Um, so if there is not a second number, think of it as a 0. You're going to write the numbers in the next three rows. So we have the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, sixth row. We're going to write seventh, eighth, and ninth row. So we're going to add them up. So it starts with one here, right? And then five plus one is six, 15, 20, 15, six, and one. And then the next row, one, seven, 21, 35, 35, and 21, 7, and 1. And then we have 1, 8, 28, 56, 70, 56, 28, 8, and 1. Okay, so the next three rows. So the pattern continues. What other patterns do you see instead of, um, rather than just adding the, the numbers in the diagonal? Do you see any other patterns? Well, we have all the ones that we have to start with one and we have to end with one. Do you see any other patterns from these numbers? Yeah, if you look at our numbers here, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just adding one here on the second outer rim. And then what about the third outer rim? We have 6, 10, 15, 21, 28. Do we, have, do we have some patterns there, right? We're adding 4, and then we're adding 5. We're adding 6. We're adding 7, and so on. So the pattern, there are a lot of patterns that you can see here. So let's um, record, let's write down one pattern that we see. We can say that for part B, the numbers 1 from the left move up by one in each consecutive row, right? So this is another pattern we can see. The numbers one from the left move up by one in each consecutive row. Yeah. Yeah, so then every time we have a, a new row, uh, our ones move to the left and right by one unit, right? And then we have to add the other numbers in the middle. So um, we can also write down that um, let's see, let me add something here. The second to the last, or the second outer rim, let's say that. The second outer uh, rim has numbers increasing by one. And then you can also find a lot of other patterns here. So let's find the sum of the numbers in each row of the triangle. 
write a formula for the sum of the numbers in, in the nth row. So first, let's figure out the sum for each row and see if we have any patterns. The sum, let me use a different color, um, purple. So the sum of the first row would be one. Sum of the second row, two. And then you have one, two, one plus two plus one, four. Then we have eight. Then we have 16. And then 32. Then 64. 128. And so on, right? Oh, wait, that's 64. 32 and then 64 128 256 and so on so then what is the pattern that we see between what is the relationship we see between the nth row so this is um, the nth row This is the first row this is the second row third row fourth row fifth row and then the the first row is one, the sum of first row is one, the sum of second row is two. So compare these numbers. Um, we can say that the input could be our nth row, right? So one comma one, two comma two, three comma four, four comma eight, five comma sixteen, six comma thirty-two, seven comma sixty-four, eight comma hundred and twenty-eight, nine comma two fifty-six. Do you see a pattern? It's definitely not addition. It's definitely not multiplication. We have an exponent, right? So what is our base? Our base is what is the first power? Well, well if we say the nth rows are the first power, the, uh, it doesn't really work, right? So then we have to make sure that um, the nth row is subtracted by one. So n minus one be zero, base to the zeroth power, and that's one. And then two minus one is the first power. So the base is two. Two to the second power, three to three minus one is, the f is, is four, right? And so if you have two, base two, to the n minus one power, then we can have um, we can write the relationship between the nth row and the values of the sum. Okay, so yeah, the nth row will be um, 2 to the power of n minus 1. So let's think about this big idea. How can you use polynomial identities to rewrite expressions efficiently? Okay. Um, let's look at this concept, polynomial identities. A mathematical statement that equates two polynomial expressions is an identity if one side can be transformed into the other side using uh, mathematical operations. These polynomial identities are helpful tools related uh, used to multiply and factor polynomials. So what is an identity? Identity is any anything um, that equates to itself. So in math, you can say that, for example, x is equal to x, or x plus 2 is equal to um, x plus 2. Uh, what about 2x times 4 is equal to 8x? So these kind of things. Or we can say that x plus 2, wait, I think I repeated my example. So I'm going to write x plus 2 is equal to 2 plus x. So even though the, the expressions may look different, if they are equal to each other, we can call them identity. Okay, so basically, uh, identity is anything that is itself. So difference of squares will give you the identity for, um, for these um, binomials. And then, for example, if you have 25x squared minus 36y squared, using differences of squares, we can identify a as 5x and b as 6x and, and rewrite this as um, a square minus b square, so 5x square minus b 6y square, and then use the difference of squares to factor it out easily. 
So then there are some polynomials where we can easily identify um, identify the types, and these types are um, are very efficient polynomials where we could factor them out easily. So as you get used to it, you should be able to spot them um, right away, and you'll be able to use it right away. Um, so square of a sum is when you have a plus b, all of that binomial squared. Then if you can write your polynomial as a plus b squared, then you can say that it's equal to 2a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The other way, it works the other way as well. So this way works, but the other way also works. So we can factor these out if we find a trinomial like this. Okay, where you know, oh, if if a is um, 3x here, a squared would be 9x squared, and then and b um, is 4y, then that would be b, b squared. And then if we multiply 2 times a b, then we know it's 24xy. So if you know, if you can recognize um, the, the, the pattern and the form, then you can um, use this right away to factor it out. If you if you see the trinomial, let's look at difference of cubes as well. So same way, um, you can if you can identify a cube minus b cube, then you can rewrite it uh, when you factor it out as a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. Okay, and then the other way also works. If you see something like this, you can, um, yeah, you can you can say that uh, oh, it's gonna equal to a cube minus b cube without even solving all the steps out because I know difference of cubes, but it takes time for you to recognize them um, because you need to know oh what's what's a what's b and then you need to multiply a b over here and see if the term works and all that. Um, sum of cubes the same way a cube plus b cube also works um, be, uh, and, and that's going to be um, a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. So the square of a sum, the only, the only thing you need to watch out is that sum of, the cubes, sum of cubes is when you cube a and cube b and you add them. Square of a sum is when you add a plus b first and then you square them. Okay, so a plus b is together here, and here a plus b is not together. It's a cube plus b cube, and then if you factor them out, it, it, you get a, a plus b here, and then you get the trinomial. Okay, so these two things you need to watch out because it's important for a square of a sum to have a plus b square, not a square plus b square, because a plus b squared is not equal to a squared plus b squared. So if you see something like this, you won't be able to use any special um, polynomial identities. Okay, a squared plus b squared is going to give you a complex number when you factor it out. So it doesn't really work. Okay, so that was the big concept for this lesson. We're going to... Um, Start with example one in the next video.